Welcome to the BioXL webinar number 56. Today presenter is Adam Hospital for IRB Barcelona, Spain. And he will present about 3DRS, a web-based tool to share interactive representation of three-dimensional molecular structure and molecular dynamics trajectory. I will host this webinar together with Stefan Farah from the University of Edinburgh. My name is Alessandra Villa and I work on the Royal Institute of Technology. So Adam is a, a postdoctoral fellow at the Institute for Research in Biomedicine in Barcelona. Is also research software engineering in the Spanish National Institute of Bioinformatics and is leader of a workflow package in BioExcel Center of Excellence. He developed a series of public web server and database, an example are MD Web, a nucleic acid flex, and a big nucleic acid sim. And now he will speak about the new tools that he, will, he has developed. Please, Adam. Okay, fantastic. So thanks, Alessandro, for this nice uh, introduction. Um, as Alessandro was saying, uh, my name is Adam Hospital, and I'm I'm going to uh, present today a tool which is that has been developed in the uh, Institute for Research in Biomedicine in Barcelona uh, within the BioXL Center of Excellence, and the tool is called uh, 3D RS, uh, 3D Representation Sharing, and basically is a web-based tool to share uh, interactive representations of uh, 3D biomolecular structures and also molecular dynamics trajectories. I've divided the uh, webinar in four main sections. I will give you a brief introduction about the tool, about the idea behind the tool. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to convince you of uh, why we, we have developed uh, this tool, and I will uh, show you similar tools uh, for you that I think is, are really uh, useful tools in our field. Um, I will explain you a little bit of how it works, uh, including the main functionalities, how you upload structures, how you edit the representation and how you share the final representation with your colleagues. Uh, I will uh, give you a live demo of the web server and I will end up with uh, some conclusions. So starting with the introduction for the tool, um, uh, and this is a truth story. It all started uh, when I was uh, reading a paper, uh, not this particular paper, this one is um, it's pretty recent from uh, two months ago, uh, but uh, I think that it's a really a good example uh, that illustrates very well um, uh, the idea behind the tool. And this, uh, for example, this uh, paper, it's, uh, uh, it's demonstrating how a glycan gate controls the opening of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Um, I'm, I'm sure that all of you uh, now already know what uh, the spike protein is uh, from the SARS-CoV-2, but basically is the protein that um, uh, that uh, makes the virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, able to recognize the, the human host cell. Uh, and it does so uh, using this uh, small domain here, which is called receptor binding domain from the spike protein. And in order to do that, it needs to uh, uh, make a kind of a conformational transition, it needs to uh, detach and uh, get exposed uh, uh, outside of the spike protein. That means that uh, in this case, you can see here a, a conformation that is completely closed and uh, so slowly it is opening till the last uh, conformation, which is completely open. When it is exposed, it is able to recognize a human cell and it starts the infection. Um, you can see here also that there is a, a couple of views, side view, top view, uh, side view and top view from the closed conformation and also the open conformation. I'm showing you that because when I was reading that, well, a similar paper, um, it always came to my mind that, that uh, uh, I really would like to see this kind of static figures in a more dynamic way. I know that there's a, couple, a lot of different conformations here, as you can see, uh, that we can see maybe in a kind of a movie. Also here, top view, side view, we know that we have interactive tools to do that uh, in a more interactive way. And uh, I'm, I'm always uh, thinking about this kind of future journals, if you want, uh, from uh, like these ones that were, that appeared in the, the blockbuster movies in the, in the, uh, at the beginning of the new century, you know, Harry Potter, The Daily Prophet uh, and the Minority Report USA Today. 
Uh, of course, we are not there yet in, in terms of technology, but uh, what we can do uh, maybe is to work a little bit uh, uh, with HTML pages like this one. Uh, and maybe uh, we are not talking about uh, future uh, kind of journals, but we are talking about more present journals. And I will try to convince you about that. So actually, when I was looking at the, um, I was reading at the paper, I was not reading physical paper. I was reading a PDF like like this. I, I was uh, sorry, a PDF, an HTML file. I was reading directly uh, in the website. And I was scrolling up and down and looking at the figures, uh, as you can see in this GIF. Uh, and basically, this is something that we are kind of used to that now. Uh, actually, the new generations, uh, they are grow up uh, knowing how to, uh, how to work with a touch screen, how to click, how to scroll up and down. And this is something that is not the future anymore. This is the present. So uh, we started to analyze uh, if we want to convert this kind of static figures to something more like live figures or interactive figures, what should I, what should we do and what should we, what do we need for that? And the first thing that we need, of course, it's a three dimensional representation or viewers like these ones. Uh, I'm sure that you all know them. Uh, they are really famous nowadays, but uh, they, they were a kind of a jump, a real jump uh, between the, the old technology and the new one because they are all working with WebGL libraries. That means that they are using GPU uh, power, graphical processing unit power from our computers. JSMOL, NGL, MOLSTAR, LightMOL, and there's many of them that I'm sure that you know. Uh, so this kind of uh, uh, HTML embedded um, uh, viewers uh, are present. We can use them. Uh, and actually, we are uh, we have been using this now for, for one of them, NGL, for years in our website. So uh, technology for this uh, part is ready. Uh, interactivity in websites, in HTML pages, uh, I think that it is ready uh, uh, as well. You can see here one of uh, uh, one tool that we developed a couple of years ago in the group uh, that basically it's, uh, it's showing you an analysis, end-to-end -end analysis of a, a long DNA fiber. And you can see how the three different plots it, three different sections in the website are completely linked one with the other. Uh, this is an NGL viewer that you can uh, zoom or rotate wherever, and uh, and you can click on one of these, for example, um, plots, and uh, the particular structure is represented here. So we have the interactivity. We have also the, the 3D viewers. And what we also have, and this is because we are now in the era of the streaming data, we have a really high bandwidth uh, nowadays. Uh, you know, we are all... Uh, watching series and films and movies in Netflix and kind of streaming uh, platforms. Uh, and the pandemics also uh, helped a lot on that. And basically, uh, we have everything that we need uh, to try to go from a, a static uh, figures to a live figures. We have WebGL tools, we have interactivity, and we have a network band. So, can we add, can we try to add interactivity and movement to this kind of static figures and go from uh, the, you know, the, the future journals that I was introducing before to the present journals? Let's, let's try to do that uh, now uh, using HTML websites. Um, spoiler alert, uh, we can, and uh, I'm going to show you, uh, let's see if that works. And I am now changing from the presentation mode to the, uh, an HTML browser. And I'm showing you our, uh, publication our paper uh, for the 3D RIS uh, tool. And if you scroll down here, this is HTML again. Uh, you will see static figures like this one, this figure one, and you scroll down more static figures, another one. But when you reach the results page, now this is it's not a static figure anymore. This is a dynamic figure that you can rotate, you can zoom. You can see, for example, in the spike protein, the different domains and terminal domains RBD for the three, three different chains. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see here how an antibody is attached to the receptor binding domain. Of course, you, if you want to see that in a little bit more detail, you can make it full screen. You can rotate it again. Um, you can see, for example, the, the red dots here, which are the, the residues. Uh, from the South African variant of the virus. You have many information in the caption of the figure as if you were looking at the figure, but in this case, interactive figure, not static figures anymore. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you can even see something like this. 
there is not uh, just a figure that you can interact with, but this is also a movie. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, again, a movie of a project related to SARS-CoV-2. This is uh, what you are seeing here is the RNA dependent RNA polymerase from SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the mechanism of reaction and inhibition of, of uh, remdesivir. And here you can see how a bond here is uh, slowly broken and it, another one is forming. We don't have time to maybe see that. But uh, I invite you to take a look at the gallery of 3DRS to see uh, this nice movie. OK. Going back to the presentation, so we can do that. Uh, and uh, at that moment, we, we sit for a while and, and uh, ask ourselves if this, is, if this was uh, worth uh, developing it, uh, just to have live figures. I can tell you that, uh, in, in my opinion, this was worth it because I really like the idea. But uh, uh, we. Just uh, we also uh, thought about uh, why if we can have something like this, which is not just a live figure, but also a URL to share the representation with our colleagues. And this makes a lot of sense, for example, for internal meetings. It happened to me a lot of times that I went to present results to my boss and, and uh, you know, presenting him. OK, so for example, taking this as an, this figure as an example, we have a, a two magnesium, the coordination of two magnesiums here. Uh, and in one particular snapshot of the MD, something happened and my boss was asking me, okay, I want to see the structure. What happened with the structure? What happened with the coordination? What happened with the atoms and the residues behind it? Uh, you know, and I had to uh, look for the trajectory, open BMD, uh, try to um, build the representation. It took me like five to 10 minutes and uh, my boss was not happy with that. And this is even worse. Uh, when uh, you think about collaborative projects, you're not in the same room. Uh, and as an example, think about our BioXcel Center of Excellence with uh, different European partners when we are sharing information from a particular MD simulation or a structure or model structure. Uh, it's really useful to have something like uh, a representation already built and uh, a URL to share the representation. Um, and finally, also for representations like this one, for webinars, for conferences, one thing is to uh, show one uh, particular representation like this one or a video. And another thing is uh, if you can show the representation and also share the representation with the audience with just the URL that you can share. And this is, for me, is really uh, interesting. So uh, of course, at that moment, we thought, OK, let's try to look at the uh, literature and see what, uh, what is uh, already there, tools that are already existing. Um, with these functionalities. And we, of course, we, we discovered that there was many of these uh, tools. Uh, Proteopedia was uh, maybe one of the first ones to uh, integrate uh, animations of uh, structures. And now they are using JSMall. There's also PolyView 3D uh, integrated in a framework of bioinformatic websites. Uh, you have this nice uh, IC in 3D. Um, uh, Beware that it's integrated in, in the NCBI uh, websites, also 3D bio nodes from Elixir Spain. Uh, none of them uh, were really focused on um, generating representation in, in a really easy way and then sharing the, the uh, representation. Although in most of the cases, you can have a URL at the end uh, to share the representation, but they were focused on linking the, the, the structure with different sequences, uh, databases, with analysis, with any kind of tools. Uh, they are really complex, many menus with uh, 1,000 different options. That was not exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for something like uh, web 3D model. It was the, the most similar to what we were thinking at that moment. Uh, but uh, you see that this is easier, uh, at least in a graphical interface than the other ones. But uh, it was missing, um, uh, sadly, a couple of functionalities that for us were crucial. One of them is we wanted to be able to upload the structures uh, models, the structures, theoretical structures, uh, snapshots coming from molecular dynamic simulations. And in this case, you can uh, only use PDB structures um, uh, coming directly from the protein data bank database. And of course, the other functionality is the possibility to add molecular dynamics trajectories. That was crucial for us. It was not implemented at that moment in any of these tools. So uh, we thought that maybe we can start uh, uh, developing our own tool. And uh, we started with the 3D RS development. How our 3D RS uh, works, uh, this is the, the, these are the main functionalities of our tool, five main functionalities. Uh, it is important to highlight that uh, we want 
uh, with uh, one of uh, the main objectives uh, was to make an easy uh, tool to generate 3D uh, and also 4D biomolecular representations. And for that, we, we used uh, um, state-of-the-art technology, single-page application, web-based uh, graphical user interface. Uh, that means that with a single web application, what you have is a seamless user experience. Uh, it's like that you are working with a standalone program, no reloads, no saving buttons. You will see that in the, in the demo. And uh, to make things even easier, we used uh, BMD-like selections and representations. Anyone familiar with BMD uh, will understand uh, in just two minutes how to uh, generate new selections and new representations with this tool. And you will see again that. Um, the tool is able to um, uh, represent and show uh, molecular dynamics trajectories. And for that is using MDSERF technology. Uh, is able to uh, not just represent one single structure at a time, but you can upload multiple structures at the same time. Uh, and again, another of the main objectives of the tool, uh, it uh, generates a persistent URL uh, to share the biomolecular representation with your colleagues. After that, we added a new functionality, which is the representation forking. And uh, you can think about uh, that as the forking that you uh, can do in in GitHub uh, repositories for software. Uh, and that means that you can generate a copy of the whole representation and then start modifying your own copy of the representation. And this is how it works. It's a cycle of uh, 3DRS. You start editing uh, your own representation. When you are happy with the representation th that you have built, you can share the representation. And uh, the final user, uh, if he or she wants to uh, modify the representation, uh, the re representation can be forked, and then they have their own copy of the representation that, that can be uh, extended, modified uh, in the edition, and then shared again. Um, uh, I was highlighting before that the, the, the a graphical user interface is uh, really easy. And here, this is an example. There is a launch uh, section, launch menu here, and you can launch from a PDB file or you can upload your own structure or structures, uh, drag and drop, really easy. And after um, uploading your own trajectory, you can start editing. This is the, the cycle again. This is the edition mode of the tool. And this is the sharing mode of the tool. You start with the edition. When you are happy with the representation, you share it and you enter into the shared mode with a persistent link. If you want, if the final uh, colleague that is looking at the representation wants to fork the representation, it makes a copy with the fork and starts again with the edition mode, but starting from the representation uh, that has been shared before. So I will explain a little bit about the edition mode now. Uh, as I was telling before, it's, uh, it's uh, the selection and representations, it's, uh, and they are VMD-like. That means that uh, just a reminder for uh, for all the ones that are familiar with the BMD and also for the ones that have never used BMD, you will see that this is really easy. You have the, the idea of representations. You can create new representations here. All these lines are new representations. If you double click the representations, the representation is hidden. If you double click again, the representation is shown. You can of course delete. Every time you add a new representation, you can modify the coloring method, the drawing method. Of course, you can uh, modify the selected atoms for the representation. And this is uh, um, mostly everything in the selection and representation part. And then you have here the possibility to add a, a molecular dynamics trajectory. Here you have a number of frames. Here you have a control player that you, go, you, you can go forward and backwards. Um, and you can modify the, the step and also the speed. So this is exactly what more or less what we rep reproduced in our graphical user interface. Here you can see um, our edition mode and it is divided in different blocks. The first block is the representation block where we can create a new representation and modify the molecular representation and the color scheme. And in the second block, we can select the fragment of the uh, structure that we want to represent with this kind of representation. So both windows are completely linked. Here you select the fragment of the uh, molecule and here you represent, um, you change the representation. Of course, in the middle, you have the stage panel. Uh, you have uh, some um, useful tools here in the toolbar. And you have uh, the final button to share the representation when you're happy with uh, the representation. 
in a little bit more detail, um, you can select here in the selection window. You see here the selection window is the right part of the of the graphical user interface. You can select by chains. You can select by uh, residues here uh, of the from the sequence of the in this case the protein. You can select also heteroatoms, ions, waters, all that is included in the in the structure that you have uploaded. And you also have the possibility to click here and make a custom selection. And this is using NGL syntax. Uh, if you click here, I will do that in the demo. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, NGL has a really powerful syntax uh, for selection of uh, a particular fragments of the, the structure. Uh, it is uh, quite similar to BMD again, so it's easy. Um, and you have also the possibility to select clicking on the particular residues or different residues in the stage. So uh, if you click on a, a particular residue uh, in the structure represented in the stage panel, it is also selected and added to your uh, selection that you are working with. After having all the selection ready, then you can modify the molecular representation and the color scheme. Um, the molecular representation and color schemes that, uh, that are available are the ones that you can uh, imagine, the ones that are also uh, integrated in VMD and also in NGL, Backbone, Bolenstick, Cartoon, you know all of them, and also the color scheme by chain, by B factor, by element, uh, the typical ones. You have also um, uh, these uh, small uh, buttons here to hide the representation, such as uh, in BMD, edit the representation name, clone a particular representation and open the label settings. You have here the label settings that you can modify the name uh, and the size and the color. But this is everything. There is nothing else than that. It's really easy, uh, believe me, and I, I will try to convince you in, during the demo session about that. Um, the last thing, the last block from the demo mode is the, the toolbar where you can, uh, well, you have useful functionalities such as, such as reload the scene center, change the background color, uh, go full screen, superpose the different structures, uh, etc., and modify the camera type from perspective to uh, orthographic. Um, as I was telling you at the beginning, uh, it has also the possibility to upload uh, trajectory files, in this case, MD files in these uh, uh, formats, and it is uh, uh, done thanks to the MD, surf, uh, uh, MD trajectory server that is implemented behind the tool. You have a maximum of 500 uh, megabytes size. Of course, you need to reduce a bit your trajectory if you want to share it. But uh, uh, we we have tried with uh, many different trajectories, and I can tell you that 500 megas uh, it's enough to represent uh, a trajectory nowadays. Of course, reduced. Of course, you have trajectory settings. You can change the range of the trajectory that you want to expose. You can change the step, uh, the interpolation from one frame to another, the timeout, which is basically the speed uh, of the trajectory. You can make the trajectory loop or rock, uh, and you can make the representation. When you share the representation, you can make it out of place so the, uh, uh, the dynamic simulation will start playing uh, directly without a player button. Um, and finally, there is the sharing button. Uh, and this is important. Once you're ready uh, and you're happy with your representation, you click on sharing and you can take a look at the final draft. And if you're happy, you can click on share the project. You can enable fork. This is important. If you enable the fork, uh, your colleagues will be able to continue, copy your representation and modify and uh, add uh, or extend the representation, always making a copy. If you deactivate this, uh, then uh, there's no possibility to copy the representation. You can make the project uh, public or private. If you make the project public, it will be uh, included in our list of projects in the home page of 3DRS so that all the scientific community can take a look at the different representations. When you click on the share project, uh, you will have uh, uh, this short URL, which is basically the link that you need to share the representation. You have also the possibility to copy the, this embed HTML uh, snippet uh, in your HTML. And this is what allows you to make these live figures, uh, such as the one that I have uh, presented you at the beginning of the presentation with uh, our live paper. And you have also the QR code if you want to try. It's uh, nice to uh, uh, use the smartphone to uh, look at the representation of, uh, of your macromolecule. Um, 
remember this is a, a cycle. Uh, I have explained you that the addition and the share. We are now going to take a look very briefly to the shared mode. Uh, once you have a persistent link, what you can see. Uh, the main difference between the addition and the shared mode basically is that in the shared mode, you cannot modify the representation. So the representation is there as the author of the representation wants, uh, including the zoom, including the rotation. Of course, you can then uh, uh, modify the zoom and the rotation, but you cannot modify the selections, the representations, the labels, the background color, anything like that. So it's a shared mode, it's not an addition. Uh, you can still uh, interact with the scene and you can still see the atom and residue information, this uh, small box that, it, that appears at the bottom of the um, interface when you hover over one of the atoms of the structure. What is new in this case is the figure caption, the trajectory player, if uh, you are sharing a MD um, representation, specific tools for the uh, toolbar and the forking process. And this is what I'm going to tell you now in, in in just a couple of minutes. Um, those are the blocks for the shared mode. You have the stage panel again, uh, the main representation. You have a figure caption, which reproduces a caption of a figure in a paper, but in this case, a little bit more, more interactive. So you have a bold and uh, italic uh, type of uh, letters. You have also um, links that you can also, uh, of course, um, uh, add to the figure caption. You have the trajectory player here uh, with a slider here that you can control. You have a play uh, uh, forward and a reverse. You have the toolbar that in this case is a little bit different. You can take a screenshot. You can get the embed code to add it in an HTML, but you cannot modify the background color, for example. You cannot modify the perspective. Uh, and finally, you have the forking uh, button here. Okay, this is almost everything that I wanted to tell you about the 3D RS. Now I think it's time for a demo, which is always nice to see how it works in a in live session. Uh, I have here prepared one PDV ID. Remember, this is the launch uh, menu from the tool. Uh, I have put here uh, one PDV, which is the EGFR file, epidermal growth factor receptor, the kinase domain. In this case, this one, as you can see here, is the one that is complexed with kefitinib, if one of the FDA um, approved drugs. You know, the EGFR is really popular because it's uh, used, uh, it's used, it, it is um, uh, related to uh, many cancer diseases. And this is one particular drug that is used in these cases, uh, kefitinib. Um, you have a default representation when you start uh, using the, the tool. Uh, is this default representation here? It cannot be changed. It's just for you as a, to uh, have a reference of uh, everything that your structure uh, contains. Here you can see that there's water molecules, there's a sodium ion, there's the gefetinib small molecule, there's the protein, everything. You can hide the representation anytime you want, but uh, uh, I recommend you to use this representation as a reference. You just uh, can modify the opacity, the transparency, and uh, keep it there. And then you can start creating new representation. In this case, I will create the new kefitinib representation for the small molecule. When you start a representation, there's a lot of information here uh, saying that there's a new representation created. You can close that. Uh, you have the new representation, which is now, now contains everything, all the different um, atoms of the structure. But if you go to the sequence, you can go and select any residue that you want for the protein. You can select any heteroatom that you want. You see that it's highlighted in the stage panel. You can also uh, select the ions, in this case, the sodium ions. And finally, you can select the waters. You can select one by one, or you can select all of them in this button here. You can view the sequence in an extra window here. This is the protein. You can also select by secondary structures. But in this case, we are interested in selecting the heteroatom, this one here. I can center the view with this button and I can use the click option to select. Now, it says that this heteroatom uh, structure has been added to the representation. So now we have the representation. We can take a look at that. We can modify, sorry, we can modify the molecular representation to liquorize now that it's just this. Uh, small molecule that is represented, give, a, give it a little bit more of radius so that 
we want to highlight it a little bit more and modify the color scheme element. You can always go to the default representation and deactivate and see exactly the representation that we are working with. Okay, I think that now I have the representation that I, that I want. I'm going to now generate a new representation. I'm here, EGFR representation. And in this case, what I'm going to do is to select all the residues of the protein, just the protein. I can click here and select all the residues. All the residues has been selected. And now I'm going to modify this to cartoon. And again, if you go to the default and deactivate that, you see that there's no waters, there's no ions, just the protein and the ligand. It's okay then. I go back to the protein. I will um, lower down the opacity because I'm really interested in the active center and not just the protein. So now I'm going to create a new representation, active center. And now I'm going to use the custom selection. And I'm going to say, okay, I know that, uh, yeah, see, if we go here, you can see the syntax. Uh, language, selection language of NGL. So you can see that is really powerful. There's many different options that you have. One of the options to select is uh, using the residue name. So I will use the residue name to select the gefitinib that I know that is called IRE. I -R -E. You see in the bottom of the page, you always have information from the atoms that you are hovering. So I select that. And actually, I'm not interested in just uh, this one. I'm interested in the active uh, center. So all the residues that are in a certain distance from the ligand. So five Armstrongs in this case, I can modify that, but it's okay. I am interested in the whole residues uh, surrounding this. And now I have the representation of the surrounding residues. I want to modify the representation to ball and sticks, to element, I get whole, and I will now Reduce a little bit the radius because I'm interested in seeing all the different atoms. Uh, whoop, okay, I did something wrong. I selected something that I shouldn't. Let me do that again. Don't worry. I just wanted to, if this happens, there is a button here which is really nice, which is enable navigation mode because uh, that. Uh, makes you, uh, lets you navigate through the scene and click on the different uh, atoms and residues without affecting the selection. And for example, you have water molecules. I hope that you can see the water molecules here that are selected as uh, being on the active side. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, let's disable that to clone. What is the clone? Clone the current representation because I want to have the same active center, but with another representation. In this case, I want to represent it with surface. I'm going to put here a uniform color, something like, like this. And again, I will, will play a bit with the opacity and transparency. I think that's enough. And this way I have the, the active center highlighted. I have all the residues from the active center. I have the, the small molecule and I can see the different interactions. Uh, and this is nice because you actually can interact and can rotate and can zoom when you sh share the representation. The only thing that you have, that I have done is to highlight the, the active center. Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to add a caption with the project settings. This is the BioXL webinar. And this is a EGFR protein. Excel, put 3DRS webinar here, maybe. EGFR protein, uh, the PDB code is the 4WKQ. And I can add a link that I have here, just like this. And I will make this bold, for example. It's, this is saving and you are not clicking any button to save. And you can close that. And now we are going to the share button and let's see the draft, the final draft. So this is the final draft that you're going to share if you want. You have here the caption that you can expand. Uh, of course, you can uh, rotate, you can zoom, you can go back and reload the representation, you can spin, 
you can make it full screen, you can take a picture of the representation. And if you're not happy with that as a final user and you want to, I don't know, take a look at the different interactions here or make a bond, I don't know if we have time for that. No, we don't have time, but uh, you can fork the project. Well, this is a draft, sorry. I need to, this is a draft. You need to enable the fork and make the project private in this case. I can share the project and now here you have the final short URL that you can copy and share. If I open this one, this is a final representation shared. And now in this case, I can fork the representation. And if you fork the representation, you basically go back to the edition mode. And here you have everything, all the different representations that I have created. You can modify, you can add more. And remember, this is a copy, a fork of the original representation and you can make your own representation. Okay, I think that's all for the demo. Uh, let's uh, use five, the last five minutes to go through the conclusions. Uh, I have presented you a, a, a tool, 3DRS, that uh, it's uh, making easy, and this is important, the generation and sharing of living interactive uh, 3D and also 4D with trajectories, uh, custom representations. It is designed with the state of the art uh, technology, uh, single page application. Uh, it's, it has this uh, selection and representations, VMD like, so they are really uh, easy to understand. Uh, and it works um, with NGL behind to efficiently show the 3D representations and using MDSERF to efficiently stream the molecular dynamics data. Um, please go to, I invite you to go to the gallery and take a look at the different examples that we produced. Uh, they are really, uh, I think they are really nice. You can, uh, uh, you know, fork them. All of them are forkable, and you can uh, take ideas from that. And from these ideas, uh, I want you to try and play with the with the tool. And uh, as I will tell you in the next slide, if you make this public, this will be even better. Remember that you have a extended, really extended documentation in in um, in Read the Docs that you can take a look with all the functionalities, shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts. It is much more than what I can explain in just one webinar uh, behind 3DRS. And what I was telling you one minute ago, uh, please, when you try and play with this, if you can make your project public, this will be added to our list of uh, projects in the homepage of 3DRS so that all our community can, can, community can take a look at your representations and see what uh, you can do with the tool. And of course, any type of feedback would be really welcome. I mean, your opinion, comments, uh, results, suggestions, ideas, all of that will be uh, really welcome for us. With that, uh, I would like to close thanking, of course, uh, to my uh, um, group leader in the Molecular Modeling and Bioinformatics, Modesto Orozco, uh, from Ayeri Barcelona and to the very, very talented uh, full stack developer, Janice Vallarri, who did everything that you have seen in this uh, in this webinar from the database that is behind that to the installation on the MDSERF and all the technology and also the graphical user interface. And I would be really happy to take questions for you and discuss about uh, 3D ERS. Thanks uh, for being here and for your attention. Thanks for a yes. great talk, Adam. Oh, it was very nice, uh, very clear. Yeah, so we're, we'll do the Q&A now. So, um, so some of you have uh, written in questions, so I will read them out. So if you type a question, I will read it. Uh, if you want to speak a question, then I think we've now enabled the, the raise hand feature on Zoom. So if you click raise hand, then I can unmute you and you can say your question out loud. Uh, so it's up to you. So the first question we have is, uh, so where is the information stored when we share a persistent link? Uh, do we need to upload the trajectory via the internet to your servers? Yes, uh, well, there's two answers, I think, to this question. The first one is uh, all the information is stored directly to a, a Mongo database that is behind the tool. Uh, that means that we are basically, everything is uh, directly uh, saved in the Mongo database while you are interacting with the scene, as you have seen, you, you, there's no safe button. So everything is automatically saved there. Uh, this is one thing. So everything that you need to reproduce the representation is there. Uh, 
uh, with the exception of the structures and the trajectories. Structures are saved in, uh, in disk, in uh, a usual disk, because we don't want the structures to be replicated when you fork the different scenes. So we are using links to the same uh, structure. And uh, trajectories are saved to this MD serve application, which again, it uh, uses a, a disk, uh, uh, but it is a usual disk, but it is, it is a streaming the MD trajectory frame by frame. That's uh, how it is so efficient to use it in tools uh, such as this. This is MD serve that is doing that. I hope that I have answered everything. Uh, so next, um, do the forks work like GitHub? So can you uh, do a pull request if you change something? Not really, because uh, actually you are not uh, changing the master in this case. You're not changing the, the original, but you are making a copy. Uh, you are forking in this case. It means that you're making a copy of the representation. And after doing this fork, you are uh, working with your own representation, starting from the representation that it was generated before. So no needs of pull requests in this case. Okay. Uh, so can a user extract data, i.e. the structures or the trajectories from the 3DRS representation? No. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And uh, basically it's because we didn't want to do that. What we wanted to do is, uh, is to share the representation and not the data. Uh, we are working uh, in different uh, tools to share molecular dynamics simulation data where you can extract a particular frame from the trajectory. You can download the whole trajectory. You can download using REST APIs fragments of the trajectory, but this is not the tool for that. This tool is just to share representation. Okay, so uh, next one is about, um, so I think not having private projects is a great open science stance. Could you comment a little bit on the data storage policy? So where is it kept and for how long? Yeah, we, we thought a lot about this. Um, all data is stored now in, in our own premises. Uh, this is a Mongo database uh, with horizontal scaling. You know what that means, that we can add new machines and we have replication, we have sharding. That means that uh, you know data is uh, kind of secure there. If we lose one node, one disk, we can still recover everything. And after that, we also have backup policies, uh, but this is in our own premises. And uh, the idea is if this server is uh, popular enough, if we have many, uh, you know, uh, if it's successful, let's say, then we can think about moving all of that, the infrastructure to a more uh, robust infrastructure, let's say BSC, for example, because we are working with them. But now it's everything in our own premises. It's, you know, it's secure for all the things that I have uh, told you, but, uh, but we are thinking about moving if needed to a more robust infrastructure. And, and the time, now we don't have time. Well, you've seen when you create the representation, if you don't share the representation, it is removed from our server. We are not saving everything. But once you share and you generate a persistent link, we don't have uh, expiration date now. So that means that we will keep that here uh, happily forever. Okay, cool. Uh, so can you render when you save the figures. So I guess like when you render with VMD. Not for the uh, animation, but yes, for the representation. So you have a take a screenshot that it, that comes with the NGL. There is nothing that we have uh, programmed. It's NGL has a, this functionality. What we can uh, modify, well, what we modified is the resolution. We have, uh, uh, we have put a very good resolution so that you can take a very good screenshot from the representation. But there's no, as far as I know, there's no way to extract movies from the animations. Okay. Um, so next one, uh, if one protein does not have a PDB file, then can I use AlphaFold 2's prediction of that protein's PDB format? After that, can I use it in 3DRS? Um, so I guess. Yes, uh, as uh, AlphaFold 2, uh, if I'm not wrong, it, uh, it is giving you PDB formatted files. You can use this PDB to upload this in, uh, in uh, 3DRS. I was thinking we have not integrated the PDBs generated from AlphaFold 2, but we can do that. We, we have done this in another tool. Maybe it's something that we can think about. 
Okay. Uh, so can the representation be embedded into another web pages? Yes, yes, you can do that with the, this embed snippet that I was uh, uh, telling you during the demo and I think also in the presentation. Uh, um, well, uh, if you want more information about that, there is in the documentation, but when you share, when you click on the share button, you get three different ways to share the representation. One is a URL, short URL. Another one is a HTML to embed, a snippet of HTML to embed that in your HTML website. And the third one is the QR code. Okay. Uh, so I guess, so this question says, is there a cap on the file size? I think you said was 500 megabytes for the trajectories. Correct. So is, is that something you're gonna sort of keep or I guess as people run longer simulations and bigger ones, you might need to. Yes, but uh, yeah, I also commented that, uh, of course, we have a much, much uh, uh, larger uh, trajectory files than, than 500 megabytes. But uh, if you can reduce this structure to something like my 500 megabytes, you can reproduce uh, very nicely, I would say, trajectories that are now uh, generated nowadays. Uh, so are any of these interactive figures allowed to be published in papers at the moment? Or I guess, are you in, uh, have you been talking to any journal websites who would allow you to embed these HTML links? That's a really good question. Uh, but well, the first idea was exactly that, to talk about uh, that to the different uh, journal editors. Uh, we have started the process, uh, not really successful so far. Um, it seems that it's complicated to jump from the from now to the future. You know, uh, I think that we will go uh, slowly go there. Uh, you you can take a look and you will find in the literature different um, uh, journals that are accepting some kind of interactivity, live journals. Uh, they are slowly uh, appearing, but uh, in our case, it is 3DRS is not uh, yet implemented in any of the journals. But we will fight a little bit for that. I guess this is a similar question. Um, is there a feature to represent these visualizations in presentation software? So I guess that sort of PowerPoints or Google Slides. No, there's no way. I had to uh, make gifts of all of that. Uh, again, as in with HTML, you can do almost everything nowadays. I'm sure that the embed code uh, will be uh, it, I don't know now, maybe there is something uh, and we will need uh, our main developer for that. Maybe he knows, but uh, if it is not there, uh, I'm sure that uh, in, in, in months from now, uh, we will have something to, uh, to use this embed HTML and use it as a presentation. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm sure that there's, there will be something soon. So can net CDF trajectories be represented by this tool? I guess to an extension to that, what uh, file formats can you supply molecular dynamics trajectories in? To be moment? honest, I don't remember, but if you let me go back to the slide, I, I guess that you're still seeing the presentation. Yeah, yeah, we are. I have one for MD surf somewhere sharing and trajectories uh, and you can see here it's really small but uh, is xtc dcd trr bimpos and netcf files are accepted again this is not something that we mm -hmm. uh, prepared this is something that is in the md surf uh, technology but i think you know uh, nowadays you can compare from one to another very easily so it, it shouldn't be a problem that Uh, so then we have a, another question. So uh, what's the role of the server in your implementation? The rendering appears to run client side. Couldn't the whole thing be serverless? Well, I guess it could be. Uh, the only thing is that we we had to use, you know, the the, um, uh, the new functionalities for from the new uh, web browsers that uh, gives you a kind of a database, uh, client side database. Uh, but uh, I think that, well, we discussed about this and we thought that it's, uh, it's uh, more secure and it's clearer to have something in server side. We have control of our Mongo database. It can be really scalable. Uh, and of course, it's more flexible than using just the memory 
of your browser that is limited, of course. But yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a nice suggestion. We, we can explore that. Nice. Uh, so that's that's what's going on. We have some more questions, <laughs> which is good. Uh, so, is there a plans to implement a GIF maker ve a GIF maker feature so you could easily generate GIF images from representations using three DRS? Uh, not now. Uh, well, I was thinking about the if you have an extension of Chrome browser or something like that to uh, generate the GIF is as easy as to use that. Uh, I don't know if this will add value to our server, but we can we can explore this depending on the difficulty of that. If, if it's really difficult, uh, I, I will be happy to just um, forward our users to the to the GIF maker in in uh, as an extension of any browser. OK, um, so I, I have a question, actually. Have you sort of so I guess there are lots of web browsers and lots of machines out there. Have you tested which web browsers generally work or we have tested with the more popular ones uh, you know firefox chrome uh, yeah. safari we had some problems with safari but we solved them uh, we still we we, we still uh, know that there is some issues with the particular uh, browsers we have also tried Dutch. so i think that we are covered with the, the most popular ones okay, so i think that's uh, all the questions we have now so if anyone has anything else then feel free to send them in or raise a hand. In the meantime, maybe we can announce the new webinar. Okay, so the next webinar will be the 9th of November and that uh, we will have Charlotte Dean and she will speak about computational design therapeutic antibiotic combined immune repertoire data and structural information. So you are welcome to register in the BioXL from the BioXL face, uh, page, you find the link to the webinar. And if no other questions are popping up, I would like to thanks again, Adam, for the wonderful presentation and all the attendees that for attending and for making a lot of active discussion. Thank you very much. And we close here the webinar. Thank you.